Welcome to Sit Down with the Superintendent, presented by GCHS TV. Join us as we welcome Greenup County Superintendent Tracy Marisi to our roundtable discussion hosted by GCHS students. And welcome in to sit down with the superintendent, James Collier. Happy to have you along with us here on GCHS TV. Join with Superintendent Tracy Maracy. And uh, I think the, the information that we're about to share is some that many, not only teachers and educators are excited to talk about, but also a lot of our students as well. Uh, the return to school, uh, looking at a return next week in a hybrid AB schedule. And we had a little bit of a trial run with that before COVID shut us down and put us back in NTI. But uh, at least we had a, a somewhat of a dress rehearsal of that before, well, back I guess about October. And that's kind of what we're going to look at next week. Okay. How are you, James? I'm hanging in there. Uh, it's, it's been a, uh, I'm ready for 2021, I hate to say it. I'm, I'm ready for it to be over. Uh, I was, we just started 2021. Yeah, it, I, saw, I heard someone say uh, 2021 has been like a bad seven day trial that you want your money back. Um, you, yeah. I'm, I'm there, so. I can agree because you know, I'm just now coming back from COVID. Yeah. So I, I completely agree that 2021 has not started the way I want it to. So, for, and for you, um, you know, health-wise, how are you as far as, I know you've had to go through the COVID issues and, and, and the recovery from that. How has that been for you? Um, you know, I'm doing well and I'm very blessed and grateful that I have pretty good health. You know, a, a month and a half ago, I was able to run a mile without stopping. So I, that doesn't say a lot. I know there are marathoners that are listening to this, but I was feeling pretty good about myself. I was starting to get in shape and uh, then this hit. So um, my, I catch my breath a little bit here and there, but for the most part, um, I'm in good shape and I think already being in good health helped me. So. Well, and, and that's the most important thing here yeah. is, is being able to recover quickly. And, uh, and I know that's one of the things that a lot of people in the communities that have, have suffered with this, they have had that recovery time that they've been able to come back, unfortunately, We've seen the other side of things we when we lose members of our families that, that go into the COVID wings and on the ventilators and never make the recovery we back. We so. do. I have a, a mother who um, is fighting right now. So um, we we have dealt with that. That's kind of, we kind of think that might be the root of where mine came from was going and checking on my parents. So. Well, and just to put this out there for all the viewers at home, we are part, we are currently social distanced. Uh, the reason of no mask for this video, we are uh, some 25 feet apart on opposite sides of the room. So with a um, barrier in between. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, there's two 60 inch televisions between the two of us and a lot of lights. I've actually got one right in my face. I did a terrible job setting up this, this set today. I'm uh, excited because I'm taller. Than I was going to say, you're, you're going to be happy. I was kidding. You're taller than me. I said, this is the first time ever you're going to be taller than me. So yeah. 2021 just keeps getting better. It so. does. Yeah. That it's, it's like the one bright spot, literally. I'm well, no, the one bright spot is the one that's on my forehead right oh, now. Okay. So gotcha. it's all, it's all good. Gotcha. Um, let's talk about uh, next week. So, it's a little bit of a challenging week because also we have to stop on Monday to pay homage to Martin Luther King's birthday. Yes. And uh, so no school on Monday. So And one of the things you put out last night with the, the message of, of a return, everyone needs to really take Monday and just reset. Get everything, yes. unplug, get your body right, get your mind right, and get ready to roll in here and get things rolling when we roll back in here on Tuesday. Absolutely. Take a moment and do, um, you know, the whole premise of the day is to be kind. So just try to take a moment on Monday and be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and reset and get ready because, you know, there will be challenges with all of this. But I believe in Greeter County and the fact that our, our staff, I would put them up against anyone. Um, our kids are resilient, and I think we can really um, make it for the remainder of the year without stopping. And yes, I, I, said that. I fully yeah. support exercising the right to nap on Monday. Get yes. those naps in. This is for our students as well because I know your sleep schedules are going to be mm -hmm. completely out of sorts next week. My own um, children are having to start learning to get back up at a certain time. Yes. And uh, it's, it's going to be a challenge. Now, for the return uh, to school next week, so we're looking at our A-B grouping. So A grouping is Monday, Tuesdays, mm -hmm. and then B grouping is Thursday, Friday. And again, we pause on Wednesdays for NTI, and then it gives us an opportunity for deep cleaning. It also allows us to bring in small groups for remediation, stuff that we've yes. been doing uh, while we have been on the NTI section. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this is a, also a way that allows us to return to school without having large populations in the building because we basically cut the population in half. Yes, we do. Um, by dividing up the, uh, I know it seems like an odd letter that we chose, A through K, but it just seems to be how 
the uh, names fall in Greenup County, we seem to have a lot of Browns and Adkins. Um, we have quite a few colliers, actually. So, um, and I'm related to none of them. How funny is that? So. Well, you know, you never know. You just need to dig deep on that. Um, but so there are no Moraces. I will tell you that much. There are. Yeah, none. That, that's a, that's a unique um, name. So. <laughs> but whenever you're um, looking at the alphabet, we try to divide it up based on population. So um, that's why we went with A through K and we're doing that district wide. Now, one thing to remember is if you have a child that maybe doesn't have the same last name in your family, um, maybe from a previous marriage or an adoption situation, don't hesitate to call the school if you wanna get everybody on the same day. We can make that work for you. Um, <clears throat> but our goal is to try to allow families to come to school together um, because you're already together at home, so that risk, that risk of spread and um, catching something is reduced because you're with your, your own family members on the bus, you're with your family members at school when you're eating lunch and breakfast, so that helps. And, and for the most part, by doing the, the basically cutting the stat or the, the numbers in half, it also allows us to space kids well beyond the six foot minimum yes. uh, recommendation within the classrooms. And when we can successfully do that, that alleviates the issues of contact tracing should someone uh, be exposed to COVID because of the, the contact tracing goes back to six feet for, for 10 minutes. Yes. Um, right now, the, they are going with, um, I see people going around the rooms and they are measuring with measuring tape. I saw some ladies down the hallway when I came into your room here. Um, they had out their tape measures and they were marking their seats and making sure, and they were looking at their rosters and seeing how many were on their roster per day and making seating charts. So. Um, older kids who maybe aren't used to always having a seating chart because when you get older you don't necessarily always get that. Um, you'll definitely have it when you come in next week because we are trying to make sure that you are safe. Now, so. and, and on, on Tuesday when we return, I think that it's important for not only the staff but also the students to understand <laughs> this is your second first day of school. There's yes. a lot of procedures that we are going to take the time to recover emergency action plans all of this stuff that we would typically do on the first day of school because the truth is we haven't seen our kids in over two months. Yes, and we want to make sure we're doing this correctly. If we're going to have kids in, it has to be safe. And I know last week people were disappointed we did not do it this week. We truly did not have the staff to pull it off to be able to do those procedures and protocols and make sure that every kid had um, space and had understanding and had someone available to say, oh, your class is still over there. Um, because those are the kind of questions you're going to get, especially as we get ready to change semesters. Yeah, and that's another episode where I was going with this. So semester ends this coming Friday. Mm -hmm. So a great opportunity, not only one, to get our kids back into school and to try to get that routine going, but a great opportunity this week to maybe play catch-up week, allow some of these kids that's maybe been struggling a little bit, get back in that normal thing, help them get set up. So when we hit the ground running, starting on Monday the 25th, that second semester starts, everybody's on a level playing field. Yes, and it's a good time to salvage that grade you know, go talk with that teacher in person whenever you're in the building and, um, you know, talk with them about the Wednesdays and the fact that you can come in and get help on Wednesdays. And um, while the custodians are deep, deep cleaning and scrubbing different sections of the building, of the building we, we can still, still have kids in the building in small groups and get them the help they need. And we're actually, um, you'll, if you're a parent who has a student who has some failing grades, you'll be getting some calls from us asking us to just please send them and send them for the whole day and uh, we'll help get them caught up. Yeah, and, and uh, it's, you know, we've seen kids throughout the building moving from about, and, and typically they will rotate if they have multiple classes they're working with in about an hour increment so they can get a little bit of time with each one of their, their teachers. And it seems like you know, once you get a couple of kids and they get the routine, they start figuring out, hey, it's much better to do this at home than have to come into school. Yeah, it's a little better than, um, you know, doing it on your own time and on your own schedule is much better. So hopefully our kids start to realize that we are here to help them. And that is the point of Wednesdays, is to make sure that we're able to get them that help they need. Because we do not want this pandemic to set them back in their life. And at the high school age, if you are not getting your classes in, it's going to take you an extra year to graduate. And that is not something that you want to have to um, go home and tell your parents. So we really want to get you caught up and make sure you have everything you need. And honestly, I would love to see quite a few of our kids. I noticed um, just last month, you know, our students persevered and still got their phlebotomy certificates. Um, you know, you can still accomplish and walk out of this school with certificates if you put the time in. And, uh, you know, it's, it's something to think about, 
you're, you're hearing, hearing college athletics, athletics a fifth year senior. senior. We, we don't, don't want to talk, talk about fifth year seniors, seniors in high school. school. That's, That's not, not a good thing. thing. It is not a good thing. It's, it's not, not good for um, your mental health as well. But it just really puts you behind on every aspect of life. So we want to get you out on time and we want you to get out with a quality education where that you are leaving with um, an ACT score that you can enroll in college and not have to take remediation classes. Or if you are interested in a trade school, we want you to be able to go right into it. And maybe you actually are able to go straight to work when you leave here. Now, now one other thing to talk about with the return to school, we're getting into the time of year where we do run into inclement weather. Um, how is that going to play? Does the NTI still play into effect if we have to go under inclement weather? Or do we go back to the normal, we have a snow day, we're out for school and that thing. That's kind of how things roll. I do believe that we will just call NTI on snow days. Um, just because we do, one of the perks of having this NTI business going on is we can truly predict when graduation will be. And I know that when we start getting into February, um, Miss uh, Barbie LeMaster starts wanting to order announcements and uh, placemats and all of that with the right dates on them. And so we do want to be able to keep our dates um, pretty much intact. And since we can control it and we do know we can provide an education via NTI, we will most likely do NTI unless there is something going on where that there's no electricity and it's a, a major ice storm or something then absolutely we'll call it a snow day and we'll add it to the end of the year. Uh, and let's not run with, let's hope that we can keep those NTI days growing and, and uh, yes. be able to get out of here when we're supposed to in May. Yes. Um, now let's talk about uh, one of the new perks that has been added over to the district website. We now have a COVID guideline dashboard yes. and uh, you and I we talked before we went on the air and the, the one, one thing that, that I, the first question I had, I said, is there a legend or can you explain how this works? And that was the first thing that you said. You really explained it in great detail and it made it seem very, uh, very more understandable. So because of the, the perks that's on there, the first question that I had was, is off of the very far right hand side, it says safe for kids to be in school. And this says yes. And I said, okay, what changes that to no? Is there a guideline or what? And that's when you explained to me, it goes back to a per case per school conversation that comes between you and the principal. It does, and what I will say is, um, you know, you whenever you're looking at that, a couple of people have asked me things such as, you know, why is it not broken down by bus driver versus cafeteria worker? Why are teachers and instructional assistants not put together on that? We also have to look at the uh, omnimity of our employees and our students. So we can't necessarily um, put on there um, specifically what that person does. So if you look at, for instance, maybe a, a McKell Elementary School, which has, you know, close to, I think it was close to 80 employees total overall, um, they might be able to have a few more people out because they have others who can cover. Um, but if you look at Wortland Elementary, it's a much smaller school, five people being out for them is a very big deal and they have no way to have extra coverage, no one who can step into the place and maybe cover a class on their planning period or a cook who can take over and uh, do two stations at once. Um, so really, we have to be very specific and mindful of the circumstances of the data. So it might be five kids out or it might be 15 kids out. It depends on the size of that school. So to have a, oh, well, if you have 20, we're closing. We really can't go that route. We have to be very mindful of where it's located, um, what position the person may be working at the time, how we would be able to cover that position, can the principal cover that position. Um, so we'll be having a conversation with each individual principal. Myself and the principal will be on the phone and I'll say, you know, I noticed you have this many out. Tell me how you're going to cover those. Tell me how that's going to work. If they tell me, you know, Tracy, honestly, I don't know that I can cover it that's when we'll have to call it. If they tell me I've got this, we can do this person will work over, this person can come in late, I'll say fantastic, we'll pay the overtime, whatever we got to do, let's roll with school. So that's the plan. Now, um, when we look at the shutdowns, does the, the statewide color-coded map that we've been operating before, does it supersede anything at some point to where at a certain level, does the numbers put us as a district back into the NTI, or do we continue to roll with it at a case-by-case -case basis at each school level? I think we're going to continue to roll with it by a case-by-case -case basis, um, simply because you know one of our areas that have not had quite as much uh, Argolite. They have not had quite the spread that some of the other areas have, so why not let them go to school if they're doing okay down there? Um, 
we are doing these hybrid based on the map, so just so that you're understanding why we're on hybrid. When we are in red and orange, our middle schools and high schools will stay in hybrid. Um, if we go to yellow, then we can look at going back to five days a week. But with middle school and high school, they change classes so often, and they're interacting in different rooms, in the hallways, just too many mass bodies moving around. So it makes it very difficult to do that spacing correctly unless you are in a hybrid format where that you have half the student population. Um, so we will stay with hybrid based on our map. We'll use that color-coded map for that. And, uh, and on, the, on the elementary side of things, it's, as you mentioned, they don't switch classes. You can move teachers if you need to. And the other side of two, it gives them more of a consistent daily routine that we need to see from our littles. Yes, absolutely. So our goal is to get them back to five days a week, um, or at least four days a week with the Wednesday for deep cleaning and RTI. Um, so we really do want to get to that as soon as possible, but it cannot happen on red. Um, when we're in red, it is just not um, conducive to having students spaced out correctly. And um, honestly, I just really want to do this right and do it safely. And I, I know one of the things you mentioned uh, in the email that you sent out to the staff last night, the biggest concern is we don't want to jump the gun and do something incorrectly and have to turn around and shut back down because that really becomes detrimental to the learning process across the entire board. Yes, start and stop does not work. And so we feel with this uh, strict plan that we have in place and the dashboard, we will be able to monitor more closely. And if we did have to stop, it would only be one school. It could even be something as simple as one grade level. Perhaps we have an outbreak in first grade. We can let them stay home and let the rest of the school continue to come. Um, so there really are some, we're being very specific. So that's why there's not really a key or a, a number on that dashboard that says, if you get to this number, we stop. That's, that's not how we're going to handle it. And, and the, the ability, ability to work under the NTI platform, platform allows, allows us to have those, those options, options because if we do have to, in case and where I am here at the high school, school, if we have to shut down the high school, school we can simply flip a switch, switch we're back in NTI, NTI and learning continues. continues. Yes, and that's the beauty of the NTI. Um, it has taken a long time for us to work all the kinks out of it, and um, I can't say enough about our teaching staff who have basically flipped the whole uh, idea of education on its head in a summer, basically. Um, we went from trying to put packets together to getting everything technology-wise. Um, now everything is done through videos. And I know parents don't love all the computer work, but it is safer because there's not the germ issue of students turning in work um, and then it not being graded for 14 days because it has to be quarantined. Um, I think they get better feedback from their teacher by being online. So um, we've actually been able to go forth and instruct, not just continuously review. You know, we're in January. If our staff had done worksheets and packets for four months, there would have been no learning. Um, we needed to go on with instruction. So I'm very proud of our staff and what they've been able to do. And, and something that we uh, want, want to put out there, there make certain when you return to school next week, you return each day with your Chromebook and charger. You yes. will need those for each day that you are in school. You will be taking your Chromebooks home at, at the end of each day. So make certain parents that they have some that, and, you know, they should have the cases that we provided. Uh, to, to carry, carry those, those with them. If they did not receive one of those, contact the administration at your school and we'll make certain we get those book bags for our students to put those Chromebooks in because we just certainly want to make certain they're taken care of. They need to be taken care of and um, I will tell you at my own house there is a routine. Um, it's part of going to bed at night with brushing your teeth and getting ready for bed is plugging in your Chromebook. So um, we make sure that we have those and we know they're in one place in the house so there's no rushing around the next morning trying to figure out where things are. Um, I just really uh, encourage you to make it part of your routine because when the student gets to school and they do not have a Chromebook, that's going to put them a little uh, at disadvantage if we don't have any spare to offer them. And I will tell you, we did just get another order of Chromebooks in, thank goodness. They had been on back order since last May. And uh, we finally got those in in December and we're thrilled to uh, say that um, the high school is now where that they can be one-to-one. 
Um, we have everybody at um, our elementary schools are able to do that and our middle schools. So we are covered with being able to give kids what they need both when they're in school every day, the access to computers when this is over with, but also whenever they go home and need extra help, they can take their Chromebook home. Um, we just really ask of you to be mindful and take good care of these Chromebooks because it was a big financial investment for our district and taxpayer money, and we, um, we cannot afford to replace every one of them who have went home. So we really need, we need you to bring those back in in good shape. And you brought up a great point about the routine, and I can't stress this enough, of working with the Chromebooks for the last three years. Parents, if you will have your children plug their Chromebook up at night, they, they will have plenty of battery power to last the entire day without a charger. Yes. Uh, typically, the Chromebooks I had in my classroom, I would go through six classes, it would go three days before they were recharged and still had battery life left. So They don't pull a lot of power. They're very, that's one of the beauties of the Chromebook. They don't have a hard drive, so you do not have to worry about the virus situation and somebody getting something on the computer that you can't get off. And then they also are lightweight, easy to carry. Um, and then just the fact that they don't eat a lot of the battery up, and so you can have a long life on them. Yeah. One, One last thing to talk about uh, before we wrap up here. Uh, uh, athletics, we got back underway January 4th with girls and boys basketball. Uh, both of our teams have been in action, but one thing that we have been seeing a rapid rise in cases of teams being shut down around the area. And you know, we've, we had to make the limitations of who was allowed to come into the gymnasiums during the games, and we did that specifically to try to make certain that the most important thing the kids get to play continues to happen. Um, and that's still where we currently are. Um, and it's limited depending on whether it's a home game or an away game of how many tickets that each student will receive. And I think that everybody across the board has agreed that while we would like to see larger capacities in the gymnasium, people supporting our student athletes, at the same time we have to be very, very cautious to make certain that we don't do anything to jeopardize those seasons like we're seeing a lot of teams in the area that are having to go into two week shutdowns. You know, um, and that is not good for the actual student athletes health because then they have to get reconditioned whenever they're shut down for two weeks. Um, I know myself personally, I'm really bad about if I don't have somebody with me motivating me, I'm not one who's going to do that extra workout that I need to do. Um, and so it's really important that our teams can stay on a routine, just like we talked about plugging in your Chromebook, doing your homework, having a routine, brushing your teeth. Our sports teams have to have a schedule and to um, have a routine for their practices. So it's really important. We ask that um, we do four tickets per player, and that is so that in case um, maybe a brother or sister might want to come and see um, their, their older sibling play, um, and then the parents would be available to play. So we do four tickets, and we have every, asked everyone to set as a family and spaced out six feet apart. So, um, you know, if you see in the crowd a group sitting together, they're probably related. There's a good chance that they all came together in the same car as well. Um, we have one area uh, blocked off on our visitor side. The lower bleachers are blocked off so that the teams can actually have their chairs seated six feet apart and spaced out as well while they're waiting to play. And, and that's the same instance in most of the gymnasiums that I've been into. The only instance I've seen was at Ashland where the bleachers behind the, the benches can't be pushed back because they're chair backed. But I spoke with uh, the athletic director, Jim Conway, and he said, we've actually blocked off a large section of those seats to make that kind of the same side. But you will notice that many of the gymnasiums that you visit, there are no seats behind the, the benches this season, and it's for the, the spacing regulations so that we can space those benches out. Uh, with 15 players typically on a roster, only five on the floor, you have, you've got a lot, you've got four coaches and, and 10 additional players. You've, You've got, got to find ways to space them out. You do, and I did have some questions about that. People called and wanted to know why we were limiting spacing when we were asking people to spread out, and, and the reason those bleachers are pushed in is for that reason. So um, I did just receive a message today, a reminder from the commissioner of um, sports and KHSAA, and he was reminding us to make sure we're having our staff, our, our coaches wearing their masks while they're um, coaching still, um, our players while they're waiting to play, and then, of course, the enforcement in our crowds. Um, that was a mass communication he sent to every superintendent just to remind us um, the importance of following these rules so that the kids can play. And I agree with this. Um, 
you know, I've been asked why are kids getting to play sports if we can't be in school. Um, hopefully we're fixing that for next week because we will have kids in school. However, there's, there's a couple of reasons for that. One thing is we're looking at the kids' mental health um, and the fact that we know they need to be in school, but we also know that sometimes sports are the only reason why that child even keeps their grades up and are engaged in things. So we are not just having only sports involved. FFA is still getting to compete. Um, we have anything that the future business leaders want to do. Um, academic teams are still competing. So it's not just sports. There are academic activities going on as well. So I just want to make that clear that we're trying to allow the extracurricular events to still happen um, because we know kids need that. And we have to ask again for the compliance of all of our spectators to, again, the most important process of this is making certain the kids get to do what they do. Yes. We have to put aside our differences, our beliefs, what have you, and we have to follow the guidelines that are given to us by the higher powers that says if we follow set guidelines, we can't have seasons. Uh, no matter whether it's esports or a basketball game, we have to do what's out there for us to be able to continue. And you look around at some of the states that's very close to us, that has not been the case. And some of those states are still waiting to play. I have a um, one of my goddaughter actually. Um, she is a a touted player in West Virginia, and she's a senior. Um, already has her scholarship uh, obtained and ready to go, and hasn't gotten to start her season yet. And uh, her parents we'll, are not happy. And won't get to until at least March. Yes. So um, you know, we we understand that it is a privilege here in Kentucky that we're able to allow, um, and I'm going to say, um, scholastic athletes because school first. Absolutely. And one thing to point out too, if you cannot make it out to the gym or you uh, do not want to take a chance of, of being included into a large collection of people to obtain one of those uh, seats in the gymnasium, remember all of our games here at home are streamed on the NFHS network. You can buy a monthly subscription or a yearly subscription. When you do uh, purchase that subscription, it will give you an option to opt into a certain school. Make certain that you select Greenham County uh, because that adds uh, revenue back to us uh, from the from the revenue sharing on the, the NFHS network. And then also all of the away games for the Greenham County schools uh, for the boys and select girls games are streamed on the Cool Hit Sports Network, and you can get all of the audio there. So. Uh, you, you have, have ways, ways that you can, can follow along with the games, mm -hmm. uh, whether, whether it's not, not in person or having to stay at home. And, you know, I have been able to watch every game from my house. So um, I joked and sent a message to a couple of them um, that I was really watching. I wasn't, uh, I'm still interested in how they're doing in their team. Um, I'm just watching it from, because I've been quarantined, I've, I'm watching it from my home. And we bought um, a whole year subscription. I do believe it was like $64 for a whole year, it wasn't too bad. And I was able to mark Greenup County as my home school. And that way our district could get just a tiny, tiny two or three dollars out of it. But it's still every little bit helps, especially when we are um, struggling financially with sports because we do limit our spectators. We do not have as many tickets being sold. And basically we're just breaking even to um, try to survive and pay uh, referees and for travel and things of that nature. So this is definitely not a money-making year for us. No. We are truly doing this to help kids. Unfortunately, this is going to be the year of red, I'm, I'm, I believe. But, um, Poor Mr. Thompson, he's our new uh, athletic director. He's doing, I mean, what a year to come into this, and he's doing a great job. And I saw him before I came up here to talk to you, and he said, I have to tell you about our finances. And I said, I've already looked at our finances, I know. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, they're, they're working really hard. They're not buying anything super fancy, keeping everything low-key because they know they're working within restraints. But I do believe we were $125 to the good or something as of today. So Anything to the good is a good yeah, sign. I said it's to the good. We'll take it. Absolutely. So. Well, um, I think that'll wrap us up. Um, again, we've uh, we've gone through. You'll, you've seen several of the graphics that we've talked about. Uh, you can see those graphics. They're on our webpage, uh, the Green County School Home webpage, the COVID dashboard. Scroll to the bottom of the page, and there's a little logo there of the of the COVID side. Uh, click on that, and that is updated daily. 
Yes. Uh, so you can get all the re most recent numbers each day so you can see where your school currently stands and any restrictions that's going to be taken uh, moving forward. Now, one thing I do have to ask and to wrap that up, how will that map be initiated? I know before we'd always gone off the numbers based on Thursdays, but is this going to be a day-by-day -day basis or are we looking at a certain number at a certain time of day? We are going to update. We've asked our principals to send this information in to our central office by 3 o'clock every day. Uh, we'll get it all put in and try to have it live and updated for the following day by around 4 or 4.30. So it should already be there. Now, if there is a closure, we will also have other announcements that happen. So it will be announced on social media. We'll have it out, you know, through our Twitter, through our Instagram, um, through my Facebook account. Um, and then we'll also, of course, do the phone call home. So it will be very well publicized and will be very specific, you know, if it is a particular grade level or if it is a particular school. But our goal is to not have a mass across the district closure unless the state does that. Um, we would like to not have a mass closure for the remainder of the year. So we like, may have spring break if you guys are good. Yeah, let's, uh, we've got to have spring break. Uh, I think we all want to get away from there, but uh, we've got a long ways to go. Let's see if we can get through to February 1st. I think that's the goal for a lot of people right now. Let's get to February 1st and see where we get through. You know, my own child just walked into uh, the room last night, and he goes, Mom, I just have this weekend and two days, and I can go back to school. You know, kids want to be here. They yeah. want to be in school. So I'm excited so for it. And I think we're excited to see the kids back in the building as well as educators. Teachers miss you. Uh, yeah, we miss you guys. So. Yeah. Tracy, I'm glad that uh, you have recovered well and, and you're on the men's moving forward. And uh, hopefully everything uh, starts moving in a positive manner as we continue through a trying year that's already been and into the few weeks that we've seen here in 2021, but uh, trying to wrap up. Uh, what, what has been, been certainly the most, most challenging year of, of most educators' lives. Yes, uh, this is not on the, uh, the textbook that you use as a classroom teacher or administrator, so, uh, or as a parent, honestly. This yeah. has been a tough year. Kudos year to our parents out there. Kudos you guys are doing them. fabulous yes. as well. So. Yes. All right, we appreciate you, James. Thank, Thank you so much. much. That'll do it for us here on GCHS-TV. For Tracy Grace and James Carter. thanks for tuning in.